my name is Brittany Staley, and this is debate number five for PolySci 160, um, The Clash of Civilizations. So Samuel Huntington, the creator of the theory Clash of Civilizations, believes conflicts of the future will occur along the cultural fault lines separating civilizations. I agree with this idea, but let's first take a look at what constitutes a culture. Webster's defines it as a shared set of values, attitudes, goals, and practices that characterize an institution or organization. Beverl Beverly Daniel Tatum, an expert in cultural diversity, says that culture and identity are the result of many factors such as individual characteristics, family dynamics, historical factors, social and political contexts, and, and more. And one more, Samuel Huntington defines civilizations as their history, language, culture, tradition, and religion. Now Huntington emphasizes that religion is the most important aspect of the clash of civilizations. While I agree that religious ideologies are deeply rooted in our history, I disagree that a civilization and its culture is centered around religion. It's more than that. It's the heritage, the language, the identity, the natural resources of the area they live in, and their values. Values having a subset of the different religious ideologies, but only being one part of what makes cultures and civilizations come together and stay together for long periods of time. Think of the Mayan culture, the Greek culture, the Native American culture. Those are classified as civilizations, but they're not specifically called out by a religious ideology. So if we look at the clash of civilizations from this perspective, the picture widens and provides a new image. From this perspective, we can bring in not just religious identities such as Christians and Muslim, Muslims and not just national identities such as Mexican culture, French culture. You can also add in major current groups such as Democrats versus Republicans, feminists versus patriarchy, environmentalists versus politicians, corporations, all of the world. All of these groups have set have a set of identities and ideologies that bring them together, and it is these kinds of conflicts that are shaping the world. I'd love to spend hours talking about these different cultures or civilizations, if you will, that I mentioned before, but let's keep it on topic for PolySci 160 and around the time mark. So Samuel Huntington has five reasons civilizations will clash, and I'm going to cover a few of them today. First, Huntington states that differences among civilizations are basic. Let's start there. While the differences are basic, they're fundamental. So in the context of ideology groups, that could be considered a, a culture or civilization. Let's dive into the examples given before. The U.S. is currently deeply divided and broad based in, broad based in the U.S. we have a divide between conservatives and liberals. Much of what we learned in the class shows us that it's simple ideological differences such as human nature and power and security, a basis for the realist versus the liberal belief that or versus the liberal belief that cooperation can and will work. Um, this is the basis of the con conservatives versus liberals ideology. This kind of debate is happening across the world. We've seen in elections in France and Brazil recently that were just as deeply divided as the US 2016 presidential race. Next, we have more specific debates such as pro-choice versus pro-life. The dis difference between the two are simple. It's essentially a this is right or this is wrong kind of thing, but it's a fundamental and deeply held belief. Another one is the feminist movement around the world. In the United States, it's equal pay and fair treatment. Not many can fight against that, but when you dig deeper at fair treatment, you see movements like hashtag me too, where women are victims of horrendous action and they don't feel they can speak up to find justice without being shamed. Now, if you look at the feminist movement across the world, you can see women in Saudi Arabia are still not allowed to drive cars because they lack the intellect. These issues seem so simple, but they're a matter of what is right and wrong, and they go deep. In America, you don't have to look far in everyday interactions to see the conflict brewing. Some have even questioned if a civil war is coming to the United States. Next, I want to talk about the clash from the process of economic modernization and social change throughout the world, which is separating long-standing local identities. For this uh, topic, I'd like to bring in the idea of cultural diversity and the aspect of fundamental differences. For example, America is a very individualistic, capitalistic country. Freedom per to pursue our happiness is in our constitution, which is great, and it's one way to live. Now let's contrast that way of life with an opposite, China. China is a very collectivistic, honor-bound society. Historically, they're known for caring for their extended family in old age. Retirement homes are appalling in China. They were known for their community farming practices and choices to pursue professions that are needed and that individuals are apt for. Economic modernization has moved them away from these roots of collectivism. In order to compete on the global trade market, they have to match their competitors in the U.S. that only work for themselves and are only focused on bottom line profits. What is a 
what does that do to a country like that? They must either compete or lose out on trade. So they compete in the pro and in the process open up tons of factories and cities. The workers no longer getting as much money for their crops and with hopes that they can make a living at the factories migrate to the city, only to find that in order to compete on the global market, the pay cannot be anywhere near fair, and hey, there are others in line, so take it or leave it. China was a country that was based on collectivism and as a result operated under a communist society, not the first to do so, but a success story nonetheless. Now, anyone in this class that has read the Karl Marx section aren't going to shy away from communism. You know it's only a different way to organize a nation, and while it can have drawbacks, it doesn't mean it's inherently evil. Communism was a piece of their identity that was lost in the clash of civilizations when economic liberalism pushed its way into the world as a do-or-die movement. Uh, we're running short on time, so one more reason, according to Huntington, that civilizations will clash that I want to talk about is the growth of consciousness that is enhanced by the dual role of the West. So, fun story, my roommate and fiancé play this game called Civilization Revolution, and the goal is to have the most dominant civilization, and there are many ways to win. Economic, military domination, and an interesting one, culture. You can win the game by having the most dominant and influential culture. Now, I'm not saying this is how the real world works, but with this paradigm, you can think of the influence Hollywood has made on the world. Joseph Nye coined the term soft power to depict the power relations close to Post-Cold War, America is seen as the great land of opportunity. This is how our soft power of dominant culture influence is being viewed across the world. Currently, we have a massive human migration to the U.S. from Latin America. It's estimated at 7,000 people. These people want and need safety and security, and America seems the right place for that. And look at how America's responding. They're murderers. They're rapists. And we're placing our armed military at the border to stop them. This current world conflict that has the potential to turn deadly very quickly, all because of our civilization's ideals and culture of liberty and justice that's touted around the world. All of these examples go to show you that it's 25 years since Samuel Huntington published his paper, and if you look around the world today, you can see that conflicts are rising from fundamental differences in cultures and civilizations. The world is complex. Our interactions of cultures are anything but simple. I'm sure this topic could be a whole book, but for these reasons before and that I've talked about before and many more, I agree with Huntington's idea that the conflicts of the future will occur along the cultural fault lines separating civilizations. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your rebuttal debates.